Hi everyone, I'm Danielle and I'm Creative Director at Bluefish Entertainment. Today I'm so lucky I'm going to be joined by the wonderful Kieran Connolly. We're going to be having a chat about his career so far. He has done everything, so he is a professional dancer, choreographer, actor, fitness instructor, creative director. He's done TVs, movies, musicals, films, large-scale events, and he's worked with everybody so we're super lucky to have him he's my friend as well so it's extra special for me to be chatting to him today please welcome kieran connolly hey hey danielle how are you i'm good how are you doing i'm good thanks good to see you really good to see you thank you for being here i was just working out the other day that we actually met 17 years ago can you believe it 17 years we were doing the musical On Eagle's Wing and you were living in Dublin at the time. And then I think pretty much as soon as the show finished, you came over to London. So I was just wondering what that was like, you know, starting your first job and then moving from uh, Ireland over here. How was all of that? Um, gosh, 17 years, that's crazy, isn't it? Do you know what, like when I think back to On Eagle's Wings, I just think, totally like my heart's always filled such like great memories such an amazing first well first major job to do before I kind of came over to London um I remember we the first day of rehearsal I remember meeting everybody and there was dancers from everywhere so you had like dancers from there was a few from Dublin I think it was four or five of us from America from Scotland from and the, the majority from London um, and it was, I'll always remember, it was such an inspiring room to be. And we ended up workshopping like for the first few weeks before we kind of hit into rehearsals. And Gail, who was um, the choreographer who came from America, well, Vegas was her background, um, who obviously was used to dancing with huge numbers. I think there was like 22, 24 dancers, something like that. There's loads of us. Yeah, I think like, that was an amazing kind of core foundation meeting everybody and then soon after that i remember thinking i think it ultimately came from like the london group the london dancers and stuff i loved kind of hearing the stories of college and where you know where they had all trained and stuff and um i just kind of bit the bullet and came over and i thought i'll come over for three months i'll stay with my sister and you know I had met so many lovely friends from Eagles Wing, so I remember thinking like I can hang out with them, I can do a class and we can just kind of go from there and see. And then kind of I ended up from that three months, never went back. So I've been here 17 years, as you said. <laughs> and what was so incredible, so you say you gave yourself three months and like most people are like, I'm going to give myself a year. Within that three months, you'd already got a major movie. So you you got a role in Mrs. Henderson Presents, which was incredible. Oh God, like that was, like this industry sometimes just for pot luck, you know what I mean? And it was, it was a massive audition. I remember the stage was one of the main ways of kind of checking out auditions and stuff. I remember going up to the shop, getting the stage, opening it, and there was this audition, dance at like Fulham Broadway new, you know, movie looking for male and female dancers. And I'll never forget when I got there, it was my second time to go to Dance Attic. I remember thinking, oh my God, the queue, the guys, like the queue just went right down. And I remember just thinking, oh my God, like, is this London? Is this like London auditions? This is going to be, um, anyways, went in like that audition. It was amazing. It was a long, intense audition. Towards the end, I remember there was, there was not a lot of us left. Like there was about four or five guys and about 20 girls. They needed like 10 girls and two boys. And they just kept mixing and matching. And you know what that's like when you're in an audition, when it's just, and you don't know, although sometimes you're like, she's amazing. Like she's definitely done again. So you're thinking like we're groups and stuff. But um, yeah, like they didn't tell us there and then and we were sent away and it was a couple of days later I found out. Um, and back then, like, I did that for five months, which was kind of my foundation. And like, it was amazing because we were put on a retainer. So we're getting paid, but sometimes you wouldn't have to go in one week. And that like allowed me to kind of do class and like kind of get my feet into London and um, yeah, like explore kind of agencies and all that. So amazing. yeah, fun times. Yeah. True story from that. This is like little boy from Dublin. 
years later, I lived with, I ended up like my flatmate that I lived with for like 10 years, still my really good friend came from that, that show. And um, uh, we, when I moved out, I was going through lots of bits and bobs and I found what I thought was like an admit, a re-admittance form from Mrs. Henderson. And it was actually a check that I never cashed. Can you cope? Never cashed it. And I was like, I'm going to run up to the bank and see, but like they closed it down because it was a limited company for the production and that was it. Yeah, crazy. Note to dancers, look after your finances. <laughs> I think now we don't really have to worry about checks so much, do we? It kind of is, most of the time it's automatic. But yeah, I suppose that's another thing that not many people do learn about initially, do they? Like the business side of being a creative and a performer, like doing your tax, making sure you're invoicing correctly, all of that can be really daunting. Yeah, like, and that's that's a huge part of learning in your first couple of years, isn't it? Because you're kind of like you are your own boss, and it kind of feels weird, and it feels a little bit funny because you're like you're you're young and you're just coming out, and you're like, oh well, I'm I'm self-employed, but I'm I'm my own business, and that sounds scary because you just think like, oh god, like no, like I just want to I want to just dance, but really, like looking back, I, I, if I could give myself any advice, it would be gosh like own that and like be really like be your own boss and be really like strong and structured in your your yearly you know outgoings and ingoings with everything and be really planned and be yeah be the boss so you have done movies you've done pretty much every television show you can think of you've done musicals you've done musical tours world tours large-scale events like the olympics if it's possible, can you pick a career highlight? Gosh, um, you know, like when I when you say it like that, and I look back, I'm so like honestly, I'm so grateful. Like it's just it's amazing because I know how hard it is out there looking back and seeing like you know, even though you've said all them and which are brilliant, like that's over a span of 16, 17 years. So it's you know, it is it is a t it can be tough out there as well, but. Back to the question. Um, probably, I think the thing that always comes to my head is just like touring with Take That. Like that was one of my like first big pop tours that I got, like was their comeback tour, the ultimate tour. And then I was really like lucky and fortunate enough to like um, tour with them for another four tours after that and like do lots of different TVs and, um, and like um, promo gigs with them. So. That kind of span over about like eight, I think eight, nine years with them. So I think like, yeah, being a part of that, take that family for so long was probably the biggest highlight. And you say take that family, and it seems this from the outside, it seems like they are such a lovely group of guys. Were they really friendly, welcoming? Did you get to like hang out with them like in the evenings after the show? Yeah, like they were, so friendly and it was all like I mean when I first the first tour that I did Gary's wife Dawn was involved and it was very much like they were always there like all the kind of all their families and um, lots of their siblings their mums and dads like Jason's dad from Liverpool was always like would always be around, hanging around and always so supportive you know so they were just yeah just the best of times and and a great pool of dancers and I think like I was, I was pretty, I was one of the younger ones coming in. So I, I lapped it up. That's something I would definitely encourage the new generation to do. Like always like absorb like a sponge. If you're in the room with somebody, do you know what I mean? Like I just say, like, yeah. That's really, that's actually really inspiring to hear because I think that's the best way of learning and it's on the job with these amazing professionals and linking to that, has anyone ever given you some really good advice that's kind of stayed with you that maybe you want to pass on now? Anything that's, yeah, been really helpful to your career? Like for me, it's all about reputation and um, leaving a good reputation behind, you know, whether it's a job for a day or a job for six months. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, just make sure you're your best like on the job every day, like representing whoever it is, whether you're, well, you're obviously representing yourself, but also your clients, or your agents or whoever it is, just like, yeah, best foot forward, always. 
And is there anything about the industry at the moment that you wish you could change or that you, you know, you wish you could have an influence over? Well, I've noticed in the last few years, like it's definitely like jobs are becoming a little bit less and less. Compared to when I first moved to London, I remember there was like, there was a lot more work, especially in the corporate kind of side of things in terms of um, trade shows and lots of fashion-y stuff and, you know, working with big brands and kind of in-house shows. We've had this chat before, I think, and we've, we've always said like full circle, it does come around. And I think it's hopefully, I know this COVID thing has all set things a little different, but I do think it's gonna come back up again. And hopefully in the next year or two when, we come out of this and um, it does go into that again. So I'd like to see like more work and more jobs. Yeah, ultimately. So what are you looking forward to? It doesn't have to be about dance or the industry, but what are you most looking forward to once, hopefully the industry starts getting back to normal, all of the lockdown restrictions are eased off. What's gonna be the first thing you do? I'm really looking forward to definitely going home, like I'm getting back to Dublin see my parents and stuff that's a yeah 100 percent um i think like theater that's one of my biggest joys and i love living in london because we have so much choice um and we i love i love going on my own i love going with ed we like we go as much as we can and stuff but yeah i think like i'm i'm dying to go see a show and god knows how long that's going to be but um yeah so one question I know I always really enjoy when I'm uh, watching interviews is <laughs> um, you've worked, like we said, you've worked across the board with these amazing stars. So just to name a few off the top of my head, you've got Take That, you've got the Spice Girls, Catherine Jenkins, Darcy Bussell, literally the list goes on. Do you have any kind of fun stories you can tell us? <laughs> um, oh gosh loads of stories but my lips are sealed what goes on tour stays on tour no 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 um oh gosh hard question i guess a funny one for me that i always remember is um with pixie lot i did her first ever music video for mama do and i was really lucky to get selected as her opposite her like kind of opposite man and to dance with her and stuff and we rehearsed the song for, we did like a couple of days in the rehearsal room. And at the end of it, it's basically like it builds and builds and builds. And we did this whole like clappy section. At the end, like she basically has to like slap me. And we had practiced in rehearsals a couple of times. And it, like somebody actually came in to teach us. Like, so you have to like, you give a good force with the back. But once you like hit down, it's and like put like smoothly across the face you shouldn't hurt or you shouldn't hurt the other person. So we did it and it was actually fine. I was I was quite amazed that like you could do this and and it felt all right. Anyways, got to the shoot and um, we're obviously both, like I'm nervous because I'm playing opposite her and she's the singer. She's nervous because it's her first video and stuff. Um, then the stylist popped up and she was just like adamant that like Pixie had to wear these two bangles. And they basically, ha like, we didn't realize until halfway into the shoot where they were, they were on the wrist that she was gonna hit me with. And then as we got to that section, it was like, oh God, how's this gonna happen? And Paul, who was choreographer at the time was like, okay, it should be fine. We'll just, we'll just rehearse it a few times and stuff. Anyways, it wasn't fine. Like I literally got like smacked with this bangle every time. And they were just like, do you know what, we'll just get it done in one shot and it'll be fine, that's it. Like, did that happen? No, we did about three or four shots. I had so many like bangs onto my face with these bangles. Um, and I remember like Paul was just, do you know what, I like, just take them for the team. Come on, you can do this. And this will be a video you'll have for life. questions are so <laughs> I'm just gonna fire them at you and you're gonna give me an answer. Favourite drink? Uh, gin and tonic. Favourite TV programme? Friends. Favourite Samantha Mumba song? I'll always come back to your love. Uh, Favourite person in the world? 
My husband, Ed. Top, top number one film, movie. Oh, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Well, guys, I'm hire it. <laughs> Classic. Um, if you're feeling sad, what do you do? Um, I exercise. Maybe go for a run. And if you want to celebrate, who's the first person that you're going to call to go party with? Probably my best friend, Carl, in Dublin. <laughs> Dublin or London? Ooh. Oh, gosh. They're both up there, but Dublin, I think. It's been an absolute pleasure having you, Kieran. Thank you for taking the time. I'm sure everyone's going to love learning a little bit more about you. It's been such a privilege to know you all these years, to work with you, um, but just to have you as one of my really good friends. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Danielle. Lots of love. Thank you very much. Big kiss. Bye.